Hi, let's talk about the Unit 8 end of unit assessment. So the first question says, which group of students would be best to survey to determine the favorite foods served at a school? Well, one person from each table who packs their lunch would not be good because they're not eating the food that's served. Four people sitting at a table in the library? Well, that's only four people. So I'm gonna put a question mark. Every eighth person who walks to school? Well, that leaves out everybody that rides a bus everybody that um, rides a bike, everybody that's carpool. Every fifth person on a school's roster. Well, a roster is the list of all the kids' names. So it's gonna be D. Miss Smith asked, Miss Smith's class wants to know um, the student's favorite lunch served at the school cafeteria. Which sample would be the best population? Asking Miss Smith's class only, asking all the girls in the school Asking every fifth student who enters the cafeteria, or asking every fifth student on the seventh grade hallway. So they want to know about the whole group, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So it would have to be C, every student that every fifth student that entered the cafeteria. There are 250 freshmen at Ridley High School. The guidance counselor conducted a survey among a random sample of 25 freshmen to find out what their favorite classes were. He recorded the data in the table below. So um, what, what inference is most likely correct based on the results of the survey? Well, no freshman liking English. Well, this is just 25 kids. The fact that no or none, well, that's an extreme. So that's less likely. So I'm gonna cross that one out. Exactly 20% of the students liked math best. So math is um, five. and the total was 25. And I wanna figure out what 250 students like. Well, I know to get from 25 to 250, I'm gonna multiply by 10. So 50 So five times 10 would be 50 students. So then I need to figure out if 50 is actually 20%. So I know that 250, put that on the wrong side. that 100% would be 250. And I wanna figure out what 50 is. So I'm gonna divide by 250. So in my calculator, I'm putting in 100 divided by 250. And I get 0.4. Then I'm going to multiply 1 by 50, so 0.4 times 50, and I get 20%. And I know it's a percent because it's in the percent column. So uh, it could be this one. All right, fewer freshman students have no favorite class than those who like social studies best. So fewer freshmen or fewer students have no favorite class. There are less students that have no favorite than have social studies as their favorite. Well, that's not true. More students have no favorite. Fewer freshmen have multiple favorite classes than students who like science best. So multiple favorite science. Fewer freshmen have multiple favorite classes than students who like science best. So I'm going to go with D because exactly 20 being the same, well, that's in a perfect situation, whereas fewer students having multiple favorite classes, well, that's obvious because 4 is half of 8. So the likelihood that that would stay the same in a population of 250 is pretty high. All right, 
tonight for her music appreciation class. Anya surveyed students at two local colleges to determine their favorite kind of music. Um, the results are shown below. More male students enjoyed rap than female. Well, rap was 49 for males and 51 for females, so that's not true. Classical music was the least favorite choice of all college students. Well, that's not true because females didn't like pop. More female college students prefer country music than rock. Well, no, because that's 48 and rock is 40. I'm sorry, country is 40 and rock is 48. Rap music is the most favorite musical choice among college students. Well, this is 100. And then if I look at all of the other ones, they're going to add up to less than 100. So it has to be D. <coughs> so the heart rates on measured in beats per minute um, are shown on the graphs. They want to know which statement is true. So since they're talking about medians and interquartile ranges, I'm going to have to start by listing out all my data in order. Each dot represents the number of that number. So there are two dots on 85, so that means there are two 85s in my data set. Do the poise, so 84. There are four 85s. All right, so they want to know about the median. So I'm going to start there. So that means you cross one on each end. I have two numbers in the middle, so I add them together and divide by 2, so that means I've got 85. So then to find the first quartile, I box in, I get 84. To get the third quartile, Eighty-six. I'm going to do the same thing again. Do I have one too many numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait a second. One, two. I think I'm off. It's always important to count your data before you start doing anything because otherwise you end up having to do it twice. So 80, 82, 83, 84, 84. 85, 85, 86, 86, 87, 88. Okay, so let's try this again. There we go. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so the medians are the same. So 
the fact that they have a lower or higher median, well, I know I can eliminate A and B because those aren't possible. Okay, then I can look at the interquartile range. That's where you're going to subtract the two numbers. So 85 minus 83. For the um, girls, you're going to get 2. And then 85 and 87, you're going to get 2, which is the same. So the fact that the boys and girls have a um, higher or lower interquartile range, well, that doesn't help me. Okay, so because it's the same. So now I've got to figure out the mean of each one. So that means I'm adding up the numbers and dividing by how many numbers there are. So if I've got my calculator, I'm adding up my numbers. So I have 80 plus 82 plus 83 plus 84, 84 plus 85, 85 plus 86, 86, plus 87, plus 88. And I get 930 divided by 11. I get 84.5. So then I'm going to do the second one. I know this mean is going to have to be higher because it's further to the right. But I'm going to prove it by just adding them up. So 84, 84, 85, 85, 85, 85, 86, 86, 87, 88, 90. So I got 945 divided by 11 gives me 85.9. So because the boys' data is further to the right. I know they have a higher mean. So the girls have a higher interquartile range but a lower mean. I subtract the two wrong numbers. It should have been 86. There we go. So that's why it's D. All right, so now let's compare these. So they want to know the range and the median. Okay, so I have to put the numbers in order from least to greatest. So I have one, two, three, four, four, six, seven. And then the same one, two, two, three, four, five, five, six. So the medians are the same. So the median of week one is equal to the median of week two. That's true. The range, so range would be seven minus one, which is six, six minus two, which is four. So the range of week one is equal. Nope. The range of week one is less than. Nope. The median of week two, nope, so it has to be C. What's the difference between the medians? So again, I have to make sure the numbers are in order from least to greatest. So I have 75, 82, 85, 94, 95. And then 72, 83, 88. 94, 95. So I'm going to do 88 minus 85, and I get 3. Um, 
Now we're going to compare the median and the interquartile range. So the median, eh, about 68. And the median, about 72-ish. Team 1 has a greater median. Well, that's not true. Team 2 has a greater median. Well, that's true. Team 2 has a greater median. That's true. Team 1 has a greater median. That's not true. Okay? Interquartile range. That's where we're subtracting the box. Well, I know for sure that Team 1 has a bigger interquartile range because they have a bigger box. So Team 1 has a greater interquartile range. But Team 1 has a greater interquartile range. So C is my answer because um, Team 2's box is smaller, which means they have a smaller interquartile range. All right, to have um, consistent grades, that means they're, they're closer together. So overall, Jim has better grades. Well, that's not true because he starts at a 70 and ends at a 90, where Sarah's further to the right. Overall, Jim has better grades. Nope. Overall, Sarah has better grades, and Sarah's are more consistent. Consistent means her range is smaller, so I'm going to go with that one. Overall, Sarah has better grades than Jim, but Jim has more consistent grades. No, because Jim's range is larger, so it's going to be C. Um, the lower quartile for group 1, so that's 5, and the lower is 2. So the lower quartile for group 1 is 3 more days than the lower quartile for group 2. Well, that's true. The upper quartile for group 1, so that's 11, is 8 more days than the upper quartile for group 2. Well, that's not true because that's only 5 because 11 minus 6 is 5. The minimum number of days missed by group 1 is, so that's 2, is 3 more than the minimum number of days missed by group 2. Well, that's 0. So that's only two, so that's not true. The maximum number of days missed by group one, so that's 16, is more, is five more than the maximum number of days missed by group two. Well, that's eight, so that's actually eight, because 16 minus eight is eight. So it's definitely A. All right, they want to know the difference in the interquartile range. So that means I've got to put these numbers in order from least to greatest. Cross them out. Two numbers in the middle, so that's 25.5. And then we've got 21. So our interquartile range is 31 minus 21, which is 10. So that's our interquartile range for the first one. For the second one, we've got 23 plus 30 is 23. Fifty-three divided by two is going to give me twenty-six point five. I get twenty. I get thirty-five. So thirty-five minus twenty gives me fifteen. So then it says, what is the difference between the two? Five. Because with five you're going to subtract. All right, which statement is true? So there's little overlap. Well, that's not true because overlap means they cover the same numbers. Well, they do pretty much. So that's not true. The two grades do not differ in the amount of minutes re spent reading. Well, that's not true because the sixth graders, the maximum was 200, whereas the seventh graders, the maximum was 150. The seventh, 
the sixth grade data varies more than the seventh grade. Well, to get, to get um, variability, we subtract the maximum and the minimum, and we get 150. We get 150 minus 25, and we're going to get 125. So I'm going to go with the sixth grade as greater variability. So sixth grade data, so that's C. All right, they want the interquartile range. So that's 3.5 and like 1.5-ish. So I get two. The mean. So this is the one where I'm going to um, multiply the number at the bottom by the number of dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So six times one is six. Two times three is six. Three, four times two is eight. Five, seven, eight, nine. Because that makes it easier for me to add it in my calculator. So six plus six plus three plus eight plus five plus seven plus eight plus nine. I get 52, and I'm dividing that by the number of dots. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I'm dividing by 20, and I get 2.6. Then it tells me that Mike's class was an average of five books. And this one is Jack's class. Okay, so the mean of Jack's class was greater. Well, we know that the, me the mean of Jack's class was not greater. The mean of Jack's class was greater. Okay, so we're between the Mike's classes. So we're doing 5 minus 2.6. And we get 2.4. The mean of Mike's class is 2.4 greater. So that's B. Then they want to know what is the mean absolute deviation of class 1. All right. So we've got 5, 15, 2, 17, 5. So I'm going to add up those numbers and divide by 5. And I got 8.8. .8. So once I get my mean, I'm going to subtract them from the um, original data. So for the first one, I get 3.8, 6.2, um, 6.8. eight point two and three point eight. So then I'm gonna add those numbers up and divide by five. I get twenty eight point eight divided by five. 5.76. The last one, I have to find um, the mean, the difference in the mean absolute deviations. Well, if you noticed, the table 1 and table the 15 and 16 share the same question. So I know this mean absolute deviation was 5.76 because I got that answer from question number 15. So now 7, 7, 11, 21, 12. So I'm adding those numbers up and dividing by how many numbers there are. Divided by 5. Now I'm going to subtract them all.
Then I'm going to add those numbers up and divide by um, 5. So I get 19.6 divided by 5, and I get 3.92. So now I take these two numbers and subtract them. I get 1.84. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be glad to walk through any of these with you. Have a great rest of your day.